My name is Ona. I want to welcome you to Art of Awakening. And in this video, we're going to be looking at the energies of February 2024 and especially zeroing in on the 2 2 portal, also known as Imbolc or Candlemas, even Groundhog's Day. And this is going to be a really, really powerful energetic portal, opening up a lot of energy for divine feminine healing. I'm also going to be sharing some Akashic messages, both in words and in art, and that is largely focused on that too, too. But keep in mind that a lot of these energies are going to be felt throughout February 2024. So you might want to grab a pen and pencil and take notes and let's dive into it. Okay, so before we go really deep into the 2-2 portal, um, I want to just briefly overview some of the other events in February. On the 10th, we enter or begin the Chinese year of the dragon. This uh, 2024 is a year of the fire dragon. It's a, a super, super powerful year that we're heading into. And if you want to know more about that, I recently did a whole big video on my sister channel, uh, Spoken Earth Ministries. It's about an hour and a half, and it really delves deep into what's what to expect in 2024, the year of the dragon. I'm going to leave that link below if you want to look into that. Okay, so beyond uh, that, so the first half of February, we're going to be feeling a lot of Aquarian energy. And Aquarius is a sign that really loves big, big picture thinking, and it's a really mental air sign. So it could be a great time in the first half of February for making plans and just even envisioning your future. Okay, so part of the flip side or shadow side of Aquarius is to lose sight of the personal, to get really cerebral and in the head. So fortunately, we've got Valentine's Day also coming up mid-February, just kind of reminding us to get back into the heart. And uh, whether you are uh, celebrating romantic love or just self-love, I think that's a really important date in February as well that kind of balances out a lot of that headiness of, of Aquarius. Um, and then, of course, on February 18th, we start moving out of that Aquarian energy and into Pisces. So we're going to be welcoming a little bit more of a watery flow, maybe connecting with the emotions a little bit more towards the end of the month. Okay, so now let's back up and go back to the beginning of the month and start looking at this incredibly powerful date of February 2nd. Um, it's a, a date that is associated with the ancient holiday of Imbolc. This is one of the cross quarter dates of the year. So it marks the halfway point between the solstice and the equinox. Um, so energetically in the year, it's kind of the equivalent of like the first quarter moon. So we have this kind of rising energy. The actual cross quarter date this year falls on February 4th, but that, that it's still within that portal of time, right, of the 2-2. The two, two. So in the Akashic message that I will share shortly, I talk about the significance of the numbers 2-2. Two, two. Um, but before we get into that, I, I just want to talk about the feeling of this, this time of year here in the Northwoods. It's a really magical time because we're still deep in the season of winter, but you can start to really feel the the energies of spring starting to stir okay and the days are starting to get noticeably longer and the rate of change towards more light is starting to accelerate so there's a movement that's happening and even though we may have several feet of snow covering all the trails some of the animals are starting into their breeding season especially i'm thinking of the owls and the foxes that are, are getting into the whole mating season and the hauling in of new life. And, and that is one of the, the real big themes of this time is this new beginnings and new life. 
so in a lot of areas of the world, you're starting to see the, the sheep giving birth, and that was historically uh, a really important symbolism around in bulk was the, the new milk coming in, but also the theme of purification, okay? And the, the same date of uh, in bulk is right around the same time in the Christian calendar that's uh, where they celebrate Candlemas, which is the date that celebrates the presentation of Jesus in the temple and the purification of Mary. So 40 days after the birth, um, the, the woman goes through a purification ceremony, and that's what Candlemas is, but it is absolutely no coincidence that that Christian calendar falls exactly on this cross quarter date, this this in bulk season that welcomes the new life in that uh, that um, speaks to purification. Okay, so this is an amazing time of year to uh, clean house. It was a traditional time of year to just clean everything up. And there's a, a beautiful little ritual of getting a new broom on in bulk, and you can jump over the broom into the house, and it's kind of like the symbolic cleansing and purification. And um, I'm personally, and I, I wasn't even thinking about this as being in bulk, but I've started this whole huge <laughs> project of cleaning house, and it just feels so right for this time. So big encouragement um, if you're feeling at all inclined to synchronize with the seasons is to start thinking about any kind of purification, cleaning house, and also fasting is a part of this time of year. And it was kind of a, a lean time. Um, so it's a it's a funny little in-between time, kind of a liminal time. And to me, this is also indicating a really powerful dream time and uh, just being able to access those in-between spaces, right? This this thinning veil uh, kind of feel. So it might be, a, a, I've personally been having powerful dreams. I think this is a time that we can be really, really receptive and um, open to not just the new life coming forward, but also what our inspiration, what our muse, what our higher self, what creator, um, whatever you want to call it, right? So what the angels want to tell you and being able to be open to that, okay? And then finally, in 2024, in the dream spell calendar, the galactic calendar, um, the 2-2-2024 two, two, starts a new wave spell, which is a 13-day cycle with the a red magnetic serpent starting this cycle, okay? So I feel like this is really going to speak to what I, I'm going to share with you next, and especially their art coming through. Um and this red magnetic serpent is uh, looking at themes of survival and the life force, okay, along with a powerful attracting or magnetic vibe, okay? So hopefully that will give you a, a feel for some of the basic energetic themes uh, that we're about to move into. And from here, I want to share the Akashic message now. They said, it is important for you to remember that as a living human being on earth, at this time, your ancestral line goes back to the creator of the earth or even before. You have been here a long, long time. Two, two speaks to the polarity of existence. It is a holy number. Two squared is four. And four is a number of extreme stability. Four is a number that enables the materialization of spirit into form. This is a holy thing. You do not realize how holy it is for you to be embodied, for form to have been created. In your mad rush to etherize or to ascend, you are hell-bent on abandoning the sacred vessels it took eons to create. Rushing pell-mell into an artificial universe designed to divorce you from the physical vehicle you have been gifted by Creator. What absolute folly! You must learn to care for your physical vessels as Creator intended, your bodies and the body of the earth. It is through the marriage of body and spirit, in a sacred way, in a natural way, that you will open the portal to the divine worlds above. The artificial universe is an inversion of this. It opens the portal to the hell realms. Do not forget your humanity. 
Do not forget that you are a child of the earth. Do not forget that you are divine. Okay, and I have some thoughts about that message, which I'm going to share in just a bit. Um, but first, I also want to share this piece of artwork because this is a, the, like the other half of the Akashic message. And I painted this in a real state of joy. I had just done this amazing kundalini yoga practice and just felt very close to the angels and just felt it really inspired to paint. So when I sat down at the easel, I had absolutely no idea what this was going to turn out to be. And I wasn't thinking about what it meant or anything. It just came out. But like after the fact, this is what I'm gathering from it. Okay. So I call it moon time because it honors um, the ancient knowledge of the sacred feminine from wisdom traditions around the world that recognize the connection between the moon water, women, and new life, also the plant world, okay? So this is a call to reclaim the life-giving power embodied in every woman, rededicating the symbolism of the moon and blood, as well as the sacred colors, red and black, as life-giving symbols of the power of the sacred feminine to bring forth life. Okay, so uh, I, I just want to mention that I have put her up on uh, uh, on daily paintworks uh, on auction. So if she resonates with you, I really encourage you to check that out in the in the description box below. But I, I want to talk a little bit more about this sacred feminine, okay? Because I feel like this is something that is very misunderstood and actually... I'm seeing a lot of inversion of uh, the sacred feminine happening in the world. And I feel like, um, you know, both the artwork that came through and the verbal message that you might want to listen to again, okay, is talking about the real sacred power of the feminine and the sacredness of the body. Okay, remember that the the, the feminine represents the material and the body, okay? Whereas the masculine is more associated with the spiritual and the mind, okay? And and so this is just a real reminder that the, the power of the feminine is that of bringing forth life, of giving life. The feminine, the sacred feminine, the divine feminine, the, at the core of her power, she's a life giver, okay? And this is something that I feel like is really, really being twisted and forgotten these days. What is more difficult, right? To give life and to nurture it or to take life. You can take life in a second. But to actually give life, there's a sacrifice involved and it's hard. And, you know, this is the power of the feminine that is, I feel, very, very misunderstood, um, maligned, and need, we need to come back to honoring that feminine um, because I feel like this is at the core of everything that's gone awry in the world today is at its core there's this either disregard of the feminine or actual aligning the feminine with evil or with with um kind of dark and yes the feminine can be dark but at its core the sacred feminine is a very very beautiful beautiful power very powerful and it's time for us to reclaim that and to begin to really recognize the power and the beauty and of of that ability to bring forth life going into that womb space um and then there was this mention of reclaiming of these symbols okay remember that kind of the quote-unquote dark powers they don't have creative power of their own they only have the power to to take they don't have the power to give right yeah. and so a lot of the symbols that are associated with um the feminine power with the sacred feminine have been co-opted by the darkness and amongst these these colors of red and black which were originally the black was the nourishing womb space right and the red was the flow of the menstrual blood how holy and sacred is it that women are the ones that can shed blood and have that be a life-giving process it's amazing um so this is really a tribute to um the power of the feminine 
And also the moon is something that has been kind of co-opted and often seen as evil. And I feel like we can take these symbols back but simply by um, bringing them into our hearts and really asking for these things to be blessed and cleansed and purified. Okay. So here's this purification coming back again. So, uh, I just want to share now that we've come to the end uh, of an affirmation for this time, this wave spell starting on February 2nd. And here it is an affirmation for red magnetic serpent. I unify in order to survive attracting instinct. I seal the store of life force with a magnetic tone of purpose. I am guided by the power of my own power doubled. Right? So this is a super powerful time. Um, I really encourage you to spend some time going within, spend some time purifying, right? And really feel into that mother energy, the power of the sacred and divine feminine and feel into it as the life-giving force. It's so much more powerful than most of us really understand what the sacred feminine really is, right? Um, much love and many blessings to you, and remember, you were born to be free.